The first string of casing is the conductor casing. The hole drilled for it is pretty big, often as much as 36 inches or more, almost a meter in diameter. The conductor hole has to start out pretty big because as drilling goes on, the hole's diameter decreases. In some cases, the rig will hammer the conductor casing in place if the ground near the surface is really soft. If the conductor hole is drilled, the casing is cemented in it. Using a bit whose diameter is small enough to easily go inside the conductor casing, the rig drills the hole below the conductor to a prescribed depth. The diameter of the surface hole can still be relatively large, say 17 inches, over 400 millimeters or even more. The surface hole's depth is usually set by regulatory agencies. They require that the surface hole be drilled through all freshwater zones and that surface casing be set and cemented to protect the zones from damage by additional drilling operations. This depth could be from hundreds to thousands of feet or meters. Crew members nipple up or connect the BOPs to the surface casing at the wellhead. So this casing must be strong enough to support the BOP stack. In addition, it has to withstand the gas or fluid pressures the well may encounter. Surface casing also has to be strong enough to support the additional casing strings hung inside of it. To drill the intermediate hole, the operator chooses a still smaller in diameter bit, which easily fits inside the surface casing. A bit of about 12 inches, or 300 millimeters in diameter, is one example of the size. Intermediate casing is also cemented into place to seal off troublesome formations like lost circulation zones or abnormally pressured zones. It is often the longest section of casing in the well. Also, the crew connects or nipples up the BOPs to the top of the intermediate casing by using an adapter and casing head or a drilling spool which is stacked on or connected to the top of the surface casing wellhead. It therefore anchors the BOPs for the drilling that comes later. Remember that the crew has to nipple up a stack of BOPs to each string of casing that is run into the well. First, they nipple up on the surface casing. Then, on the intermediate casing. And finally, on the production casing. To drill to final depth below the intermediate casing, the rig owner selects a bit whose diameter is small enough to fit inside the intermediate casing. Say from 8 to 10 inches or 200 to 250 millimeters. This part of the hole penetrates the producing zone. When cemented in place, production casing seals off the producing zone and readies it for production. Production casing also houses and protects the tubing and other equipment used to produce the well. The operator usually perforates, puts holes in this casing when the well is completed or ready for work to begin. Well completion is the term describing the activities and methods of preparing the well for production of oil and gas. Oil and gas flow into the well through the perforations. Sometimes well owners run liners instead of casing into the well. A liner is a shortened string of casing used to case the smaller open hole section below an existing casing string in the hole. 
It's just like casing, except that a liner does not run all the way to the surface. Instead, the casing crew hangs it from the bottom of a previously run casing or liner string using a special piece of equipment called a liner hanger. In this case, there's an intermediate liner and a production liner. Using liners saves money since they do not extend to the surface.